بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In this presentation I'm going to provide a brief introduction and overview about the MavLink protocol, Ardu Pilot and Ground Stations So what is the MavLink protocol? The MavLink protocol is simply a communication protocol that allows an unmanned vehicle like a copter, a drone or a rover to communicate with the ground station So the vehicle will send messages to the ground station that allows uh, the ground station to monitor the status and for example follow the position of the vehicle and also the ground station can send also messages to the vehicle in order to perform some actions for example moving from one point to another so the Mavlink protocol was first released in 2009 by Lawrence Mayer under the LGPL license and this protocol basically specifies a set of messages and their structures and formats and uh, how they are exchanged between the vehicle and the ground station so looking at this figure here we can see uh, a drone and a ground station so this drone can send Mavlink messages to the ground station and here we can see an example of GPS coordinate message that can be sent from the drone to the uh, to the ground station and the latter will uh, parse the incoming message and then find the position to visualize the location of the drone into the map and of course there are several types of Mavlink messages that we are going to discover in future videos uh, so there is a point-to-point -point connection between the drone and uh, the ground station usually this connection happens through a wireless uh, connection or serial connection uh, using uh, telemetry devices or UDP protocol or TCP protocol and then a set of messages are exchanged continuously between the ground station and the drone in order to monitor and control the state of the unmanned vehicle so typically the Mavlink protocol is implemented inside the uh, autopilots and these autopilots governs the control and the motion of the drone and the most common autopilot for drones and for unmanned vehicles is the Ardu Pilot. So Ardu Pilot is a full-featured and reliable autopilot software. It allows to control the vehicle system autonomously. It has been developed over five years by a team of diverse professional engineers and computer scientists. Uh, this autopilot is capable of controlling any vehicle system, including planes, multi-rotors like uh, quadcopters or octocopters or helicopters and also ground vehicles and underwater vehicles like boats and submarine robots so this Ardu pilot it supports the Mavlink protocol as uh, previously said and has advanced data logging analysis and simulation tools that allows the developer to analyze the behavior of the unmanned vehicle after completing a mission. The R2 pilot was initially developed for the 8 bits microcontrollers and now is uh, being optimized to use with uh, 30 bits ARM microcontrollers and it can also run under Linux and single board computers. R2 pilot supports several types of vehicles including uh, ground vehicles, rover, planes and also multi-copters supporting different ones quadcopters, uh, octocopters, and uh, it has also three copters, uh, helicopters, so different types of vehicles. So there is a complete stack for copters and a different stack for planes and different stack for uh, rovers. All of them are included in Ardu Pilot. For uh, the APM copter, it is an open source multi-copter UAV controller. It supports any kind of multi-copter and helicopters, including quadcopters supports different frame type for the multi-copters and uh, it won the Sparkfan 2013 and 2014 autonomous vehicle competition there is another stack that is called APM plane this is for uh, fixed wing aircrafts it provides advanced functionalities for planes and supports hundreds of three-dimensional waypoints automatic takeoff and landing and also sophisticated mission planning and camera controls the third type is the APM rover it also provides an advanced open source autopilot for guiding ground vehicles and boats. It can run fully autonomous, uh, it can execute autonomous missions that are defined uh, using a mission planner software, which we are going to discover uh, in a few slides. 
and this one also won the 2013 and 2014 Spark Fan Autonomous Vehicle Competition. Now let's talk about the common autopilot hardware. So as you can see in this figure, there are several common autopilot hardware. The most popular uh, and probably the older one is the PixHawk. And PixHawk is an independent open hardware project aiming at providing high-end autopilot hardware to the academic, hobby and industrial communities at low cost and high availability. So the total cost of PixHawk alone without accessories is around uh, $100. And it was originated from uh, the PixHawk project and the computer vision and geometry lab of ETH Zurich in Switzerland and the autonomous system lab. Uh, this autopilot module runs a very efficient real-time operating system. This is the RTOS operating system, which provides a POSIX-style environment, and the software can be updated with a USB bootloader. And now, very recently, there has been the release of PixHawk 2, which is an extension of uh, PixHawk with uh, more uh, elaborated features, including uh, vibration isolation and three integrated IMUs with uh, better connectors. And PixHawk 2 flight controller has been designed by the PixHawk open hardware uh, community as well in collaboration with 3D Robotics and was first released as the autopilot of the 3DR solo drone. And it has similar features to uh, the original version of PixHawk. So the third autopilot that we present is the Navio 2, which is a Linux autopilot that uh, operates on top of a Raspberry Pi. So Navio 2 is actually uh, an autopilot board or shield that uh, can be plugged onto a Raspberry Pi 2 or Raspberry Pi 3 and works under the Linux operating system. And Navio runs well the proven APM flight stack and the code is executed directly on the Raspberry Pi with real-time Linux kernel and run also for copter, plane and rover as well. It supports the Mavni communication protocol with a wide variety of ground stations from Windows, Mac and Linux as well. The good point in Navio 2 is that it has internet connectivity and it's possible to use uh, LTE 4G 3G modem or higher power Wi-Fi to make the drone accessible through the internet or on the local area network. It's also possible to stream video from a Raspberry Pi camera to use a joystick to control the drone from anywhere in the world. The combination between Navio 2 and Raspberry Pi makes it a very suitable autopilot for low-cost drones. So the cost of Navio 2 platform is around uh, $160 with the Raspberry Pi around uh, $30 to $40. So in total it's around $200 which makes a uh, more powerful autopilot as compared to PixHawk because PixHawk doesn't have uh, a computer board but also it can be integrated with a single board computer like Raspberry Pi or also Ordroid XU4. The fourth platform is uh, Early Brain 2, which is uh, also similar to uh, Navio 2. So the first version of Early Brain, it worked on uh, Eaglebone single board computer and Early Brain 2, the second version, it works on uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. So this platform is, uh, as I mentioned, similar to Navio 2 platform. It has uh, gravity sensors, gyroscope, digital compass, pressure sensors, temperature sensors, the Early Brain 2 also operates on top of a Linux operating system and has an integrated. So this platform also supports the Mavlink protocol for communication between the, the drone and the ground station and also supports ROS through the MavROS protocol that is uh, an additional layer on top of the Mavlink that connects Mavlink to ROS so the developer will be able to develop ROS programs that allows ROS to communicate with the Ardu Pilot autopilot stack. The last platform in the figure is the PXF Mini, which is a low-cost and open autopilot shield for the Raspberry Pi that allows to create a ready-to-fly autopilot with support for drone codes APM flight stack. The shield has been designed specifically for the Raspberry Pi Zero, but it is also compatible with other boards like the Raspberry Pi 2 and the Raspberry Pi. This figure shows the possible connections with the PixHawk autopilot platform. So the PixHawk can be connected to several uh, accessories and devices. It can be connected to a buzzer to provide audio signals that indicate what the UAV is doing. It can also be connected to a safety switch that allows the operator to safely power down the UAV. PixHawk is also connected to telemetry devices through the telemetry UART port and there are two ports for telemetry telemetry 1 and telemetry 2 and the telemetry provides a secondary means of controlling the UAV 
it can allow you to work with powerful gram station software in real time and there are two types of telemetry some telemetry works on uh, 915 megahertz frequency band and others on the frequency band 433 megahertz which are designated for Europe the first one for the USA and telemetry allows long-range communication between the ground station and the autopilot which can reach up to 2 to 5 kilometers depending on communication range of the telemetry device in addition the autopilot is connected to the motors of the copter and usually the connection is done through the ESC module and ESC stands for electronic speed controller it allows to provide control signals to the motors according to the input signals received by the autopilot so as you can see here for the servo connections there are several pins for to connect the motors to them and through these pins PWM signals are going to be sent to the electronic speed controller and then will be transferred to the motors according to the input signal uh, in addition to that the uh, autopilot is uh, powered by a LiPo battery and there is uh, a power module that allows to make uh, required voltage and current conversion usually the LiPo batteries operate at 12 volts and the peaks hoax weight a voltage of 5 volts so there is a power module that makes the conversion and also the power module allows to provide power to the motors through the ESC it's also recommended and possible to use a battery tester which provide an audio alarm whenever the battery goes below a predefined level and here in the autopilot you can see an arrow that indicates the forward direction of the autopilot so usually this arrow indicates the forward direction in the X axis which should follow the same direction of the arrow the autopilot is also connected to a receiver and this receiver receives uh, input uh, control commands from the remote control and the receiver takes uh, the 2.5 gigahertz signals from the transmitter which is the remote control the autopilot also has an I2C port that allows to connect uh, an external compass and also it has another port that is the GPS port that allows to connect an external GPS and here when you connect the GPS you have to make sure that the arrow of the GPS in, is in the same direction of the arrow of the autopilot platform and this also need to be configured in the calibration phase of the compass so typically the Pixhawk has an internal compass but it, it can also be overridden by an external compass which is usually embedded with the GPS like the 3DR GPS compass device and in some cases we might have only gps without compass can also be connected to the gps port only it is uh, recommended to have an external compass because usually we can put the external compass far from the interference occurring inside the board which will result in a more stable flight experience you can also see that we can have a ground station that can be either on a tablet or on a computer machine uh, that is connected to the autopilot through a telemetry device and this telemetry device will be able to communicate through the telemetry device that is connected to the autopilot to send and receive mavlink messages between the autopilot and the ground station the communication between the ground station and the autopilot does not necessarily occur through a telemetry device but it can also occur through a local area network using Wi-Fi but the range will be much smaller in this case this figure summarizes the main ports of a Pixhawk autopilot platform. So Pixhawk uh, is characterized by 168 MHz Cortex CPU with 256 kilobyte of RAM and 2 MB of flash. It has different type of sensors including 3D accelerometer, gyroscope and magnetometer and also a barometer. It contains a micro SD slot and 5 UART ports, CAN port, 1 I2C port, 1 SPI port and 1 ADC port. And several others so similar to Pixhawk Navi 2 is also an autopilot uh, but this autopilot is uh, actually uh, a shield for the Raspberry Pi it operates on Raspberry Pi 2 which is a quad core 1 gigahertz single board computer that runs on real-time uh, Linux and also contains the APM flight stack there is an APM flight stack uh, specifically configured for Navi 2 so the advantage of Navi 2 is that it contains uh, an integrated uh, GPS receiver and uh, this GPS receiver it has an external antenna in addition to that it has a uh, 
dual IMU, so it has two IMU integrated devices, and this redundancy is to improve the flight performance. So the first IMU is the MPU9250, it has a 9 degree of freedom, and the second IMU is the LSM90S1, which also has 9 degree of freedom. So this redundancy is actually good for improved flight performance. Furthermore, it has an integrated input-output processor which uh, accepts the input and provides 14 PWM outputs channels with variable frequencies. So here we have 14 inputs where we can connect uh, different uh, motors and ESC to them. It also has a triple redundant power supply. So the power supply for Navi2 can be uh, put directly from uh, a battery or also it can be from a Raspberry Pi power, can be powered from the Raspberry Pi. It has also different extension ports, including UART port, I2C port, and also ADC ports or interfaces with sensors and radios. Furthermore, it has a high resolution barometer. So this is the barometer. It sends altitude with 10 centimeters resolution and this barometer allows to uh, estimate the altitude to the ground and uh, it is actually recommended that this barometer is covered with a certain foam so that to avoid interference and airflow to compromise the uh, operation of the barometer.